Okay. Uh, Oh, we left off here. Um, we're right in the middle of this. ICL. It's, it's just like a halogen, bromine, chlorine. How does halogen add to an alkene? What do you know about the addition of halogen to an alkene? In what, in what manner does it add ultimately? There's no more cognitive cup here. It's just, uh, you put a halogen on each. Maybe with ICL you could say more cognitive cup. But with bromine, there's no regiochemistry. What do you know about the addition of halogen to an alkene? It's a trans addition. Why is it a trans addition? Because you get a bromonium that's back bonded, and then the other halide comes in and attacks back side, and opens it up. Okay? Uh, you're gonna, it's trans addition, but also with the interhalogen, ICL, okay? Um, okay, we have regiochemistry, we have uh, other things, guys, uh, product here. Is the iodine going to be on the left or right carbon? Right carbon. The right carbon. Okay, right carbon. In terms of product, with no stair chemistry shown, we're going to have uh, iodine here and chlorine here. Yes. Yeah, did we show that last time? Yes. Okay, and that's your regiochemistry. <coughs> Here and here. Chlorine will not be here, iodine will not be here. Is this reaction regioselective? Yes. Yes. Regioselective. The iodine ends up in a certain region, the chlorine ends up in a certain region. Or site. Site selective, regioselective. We do not get the other regioisomer. <coughs> At least not as a major product. And anytime we ever say this is a product, I usually say yes and no. In, in real life, maybe the other product is formed a little bit as a minor product, but for us, we'll just say it's not formed. Okay, to make the, the lingo clear. Okay, that's a product without any stereochemistry. Uh, is the reaction, let's skip stereoselective, is it an antioselective? What type of stereochemistry are we going to get? Let's do that. Uh, the alkene is stereogenic. Let's turn this and redraw it with two groups maybe back. This isopropyl and methyl are cis. They're cis there. This isopropyl and this isopropyl are trans. <laughs> so we can draw this molecule like that. And all I've done is turned it. My thumb is straight down. If I do this, my thumb is now forward. Pinky is up. If I turn my hand like this, pinky is now back and thumb is forward. That's all I've done here. Try to turn it flat. Okay. What do we know about the addition? We said earlier, trans addition. Okay. Get rid of one of the double bonds. Here we go. We can put an iodine here. So that's where it goes. The chlorine here. But the new things can be drawn in the plane, straight up, straight down. Transition. But guess what? We're also going to get, okay, we can show double bond here. I'm just going to erase it later. I can put this back. Same exact starting point. rid of that, and do the opposite. Put the iodine up and the chlorine down. And both of these will be formed. How is this one formed? The alkene attacks the iodine down. It back bonds. It's back bonded down. 
then the chloride comes in and kicks the iodine off from the top. Or this could attack up. It attacks up, attacks the iodine, it back bonds, right? You can envision an iodonium ion. The chlorine comes in and kicks the iodine back off. The alkene has a face, just like a hand. The reaction can take place from the bottom or the top. And that's why you get two different outcomes. What's the relationship between these two? It might be a little bit hard to tell because they're not drawn certain ways. Uh, projections are not switched. What is the relationship between these two? Those two. How do you know they're in What? Well, again, I would have to question, do you, do you really know that, or are you just speculating that? Uh, again, they're not drawn in a way that is easily seen, but they are enantiomers. Okay? We could do that a variety of ways. We could do R and S, and if you got R and S here, this would be S and R. I guarantee you it would be. Uh, they are enantiomers. Let's see if we can get there. Uh, these are enantiomers. Let me ask you, me telling you that, let's a ask, answer this question. Is this reaction an antioselective? Did we only get one enantiomer? No. No, we got both. Is your reaction an antioselective? No. You get both. Here's a take home. None of the reactions that we are doing with alkenes are an antioselective. If an antimer is possible, you're going to get both. No reactions right now are in antioselective. Because an alkene has a face, it can attack top or bottom. Okay? Fisher projections. Let's put these in Fisher projections. Because I can ask you this question. A rethrow or a 3-0? That's a possibility. Does this reaction give a rethrow? Or 3O? Or does it give both? Well, what did it give? Let's draw this in a fissure. A and B. Let's draw A in a fissure. We can put anything up or down. What do you want to put up? Chlorine iodine in a plane. You'll put chlorine at the top. Or I did, it doesn't matter. Let's put chlorine at the top. If this is at the top, that means the ground's over here. I tend to like to stand over here. Chlorine's at the top. It's away from the ground. Iodine's closer to the ground. With chlorine going away, what size is the isopropyl on? The right side. Chlorine going away, the isopropyl is on the what? The right side. Uh, feet on the ground, chlorine going away, isopropyl is on the right. That means the methyl going back is on the left, yes. Okay, with the iodine going away, which means here. With the iodine going away, what side is this isopropyl on? On the right. The right side. Correct, it's also on the right. Because for the iodine to be going away, what do I do? I'm up here. I'd have to be hovering up here, right? If I'm no. hovering up here? No. This is me up here, looking down, with the iodine going away. The, oh, hold on, my feet are in the air. Yeah. The ground is over here. I need to hover like this. Here's, here's my, I'm looking down. Iodine going away, isopropyl going back. Iodine going away, isopropyl going back. I'm drawing H on this carbon coming forward. There's A in a Fisher projection. Rethrow or 3 -o. Does it give any directions? It says isopropyl groups at top and bottom. Well, we can rotate this up, we can rotate this down, and rotating that is going to give isopropyl at the top. With isopropyl at the top, where's the chlorine? Here? Yes. <coughs> Nothing there. Isopropyl at the bottom, where's the iodine? Love the sun. Here. I'm drawing H here. There's A in a fissure. With groups at top and isopropyl at top and bottom, is it a reth or a three of? Real. No. What did you say? Real. 
I can't hear. Somebody said three up. No? Everybody said three up? It is a retro, right? Same, same side of that. Yeah. I tried your groups were on the same side of the Fisher. Yes. Let's do this one in a Fisher projection. We're also practicing our Fishers. Let's do B in a Fisher projection. Uh, what do we put at the top? Chlorine. With chlorine going away, what side, where's the ground? Iodine is closer to the ground. Ground's over here. With chlorine going away, what side is the isopropyl on? Correct, left. I'm drawing, I mean, the methyl is on the right. Iodine going away. Hold on, feet on the ground. Iodine going away. Isopropyl going back. I'm over here to the left. Iodine going away, isopropyl to the left. I'll draw an H here. By the way, look at this, this drawing and my original over there to the far left. What do they look like now? Mirror images. You see how they're mirror images? You can see it now. Far left and far right? Yes. Let's rotate this. Isopropyl here. Right. That's going to move where? Chlorine here, methyl here. Is that right? Isopropyl down. There's iodine here. H here. So that's rotated. Arethro or 3 O? Arethro. Compare this to the second structure. What do they look like? Also mirror images. <laughs> See how they're mirroring? Yes. So are they indeed in antimers? I told you it's hard to see here. Will you? It's easier to see there. Yeah. Uh, so we, we see they are in antimers. What's the, what's the mirror image of erythro? Erythro. There you go. There are your products. Did we get any 3 of Only erythro. No 3 -0. What's the relationship between these two? <coughs> Those are diastereomers. Yes. Question, is this reaction diastereoselective? Did we only get one diastereomer or did we get both possible? <coughs> only one. Is reaction diastereoselective? Yes. But it's not an antioselective. Because if you consider possible an antimer, did we get one or both? You get both, and I told you all reactions are, in, are none of the reactions we've done so far are going to be in antioselective. When we get to test three, we will see some that are in antioselective, but not now. So that answer is always no. Is, the, is it stereoselective? That's a vague question because that could be specifically either one of these, but both of these are stereochemistry. Vague question. You would have to say, what do you mean stereoselective? Are you talking about an antioselective or a diastereoselective? You'd have to ask for clarification on that question. Yeah? Okay, so those are those, those are those terms we practice fissures. Is everything falling into place here? Okay. Key thing here, and I wish I would stress more, and uh, is how does halogen add to an alkene? Anti. Anti addition. How does hydrogen add to an alkene? Sin. Why is it sin? Because the hydrogen comes from the metal. Yeah? Sin. How does BH3 add to an alkene? Sin. Because you attack the boron, and then where does the H come from? From the boron, and so they're both on the same side. Okay? So those are key terms. And guess what? When we're through, those things were in the headings of each section that we covered. All right. All right, such as hydroboration. Okay. Sin, or you could call it cis addition. Sin and anti are used when the, uh, when the 
condition terminology. Okay. Um, <coughs> we have a uh, this is a warm up page. We're trying to find Waldo, is that what color is that? White and white. Um, okay, some of the bottoms, and that's sort of where we're going to be ending here, pulling it all together, going back to alkene reactions. Let's go back up here. Are we ready to talk about some of these? Uh, Zocor, how many Kyle carbons present? Can I get an answer for that, Zocor? Three. Kyle Carbons. Three. Five. I'm thinking it's more than three. Where? I see a Kyle Carbon there. 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 Are those all chiral carbons? Yes, I see one more, yeah. Where? Right here? Yeah. Uh, and yes, indeed, it is. Is there another one too? Where? Other, where there's the other carbon yellow or whatever? Those two ox, the, you're lucky, yes, that one, is that one? Is that chiral? That's oh, no. Yes, Carl? No. Two no. methyl group. Not Carl? No. What am I saying? It's not Carl. <coughs> Why? It's got two methyl groups. There is a redundant. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Did we see any others? <coughs> okay, number of possible stereoisomers for Zocor. Stereoisomers, that is 2 to the n, where n is number of stereogenic sites. How many stereogenic sites does Zocor have? I see seven chiral carbons. Any other stereogenic sites? The alkene. What are possibilities? The alkenes. Alkenes can be. Are these alkenes stereogenic? No. Yeah. Not in the six membered ring. Okay? Right here, these, this alkene is essentially cis. Can that alkene be trans? Not in still make the ring. And what I told you was, very large rings can have trans double bonds, cis and trans, but a six-membered ring cannot. To make the double bond trans, or the group, the, the rings, the, the bonds to the ring, if they're trans, it cannot make the six-membered ring. So these are not stereogenic. It's two to the seven, and that's what 124. Is that it? Is that 128. 128. Okay, so you can draw them all, okay? That, draw them all, turn that in next, next time, okay? All of them label. One of them will be where all, all chiral carbons are R. And one of them will be where all chiral car carbons are S. And those two will be in antimers. Of the 128, guess what? There's 64 DL pairs. 64 pairs of enantiomers is what will equal the 128. And I just told you one pair. Another pair would be six of them being S and one of them being R. And you get the idea. And you can go through all those variations and you'll get 128 total. Okay, don't turn that in. I don't want to grade it. <laughs> That's it. Okay, can you do for the next one? Let's, uh, anybody got anything on the next one? Otherwise, I'm going to move to... Showing a Fisher projection, fill at top, ethyl at bottom. Is it a rethro or a 3 0? <laughs> Is that a rethro or a 3 0? A rethro. A rethro? Yes. What final at top and ethyl at bottom?
basically this is where I was going to tell you about rotating it and get done in the bird. Not uh, showing with fennel at top. Did we do this one already? Yes. Okay. Did we say a read through a three Yes. Well, you didn't tell me that. You're going to let me do it again. Both in antimers, like, like that probably is both in antimers. 
What if you only wanted one enantiomer? You'd have to separate the enantiomers. Okay. One way to do that is shown here. What if we have a mixer of enantiomers, like an RNS mix? What you can do is, if we can convert this, these two to diastereomers. Diastereomers are more readily separated because diastereomers have different properties. And we can do that in this way. And this uses, uh, basically, we can react this with something that's chiral itself, like it's S. It's a type of reaction. And the R will react with S to give RS. And the S will react with S to give SS. That's still a mixture. But now, what is the relationship between RS and SS? turn our mixture into diastereomers. Now you can do this and you can make different compounds. This can also be acid-base chemistry. The good thing about acid-base chemistry is it's readily reversible. So we can go here, then we can also, we can come back when we want, and we can separate this. So the association between the RS, et cetera, can be either covalent or ionic. Okay, at this point we can separate these. And down here, this shows an example of this, we're separating. This amine, if it's racemic, 50-50 mix, how carbon there, it can be separated by reacting it with tartaric acid. Now tartaric acid actually has two how carbons. This, and this can be obtained naturally, it's just one enantiomer, and it's, it's RR. That can be readily obtained. But the amine is, is both. And the amine reacts with one of the acidic protons to make an ion pair. Protonate the amine, and we got an anion. But we end up with RRR, but we also get RRS. A and B. And A and B can be separated by recrystallization, actually. Where the B ion pair will actually crystallize. Now, could we have predicted that? No, never in a million years. Trial and error, though, showed us that it happens with tartaric acid. You have to investigate your research. But B will crystallize separately. And so you can collect crystals of B. Here might here my B crystals of this salt. Yes. Well then you can take your crystals and you can treat the base, and that will remove the proton from this, take it back to the original neutral amine. And now this will be separated from your ion. It's all S now. Because the SRR crystallized. And then you just take it back to that. And so now you have just S. Uh, in this scenario, the tartaric acid up there, the S thing, is called a chiral resolving agent. And it worked by reacting with this and converting the amine to two different ion pairs. And they're diastereomers, and in this case, one selectively re recrystallized. So, that's an example. Uh, at this point, we're getting to some sort of just miscellaneous information, um, applying things. What can we do to finish up steric chemistry? In the middle section, front page, finding wall that we did all those. Power of yeah. Carol Misa. Yes.
traveling below here. Number one, Al I've got an alkene, MCPBA, and what's that, dichloromethane? What, what are we converting the alkene to? Yes, epoxide. Yes. Okay. If we don't do stair chemistry, the epoxide is going to look like. Well, there's your epoxide. One carbon's got a phenyl and a methyl, and the other carbon has a phenyl. That's phenyl two. Phenyl one is on the same carbon as the methyl. Yeah. I drew that up. I could have drawn it down. I'm not showing any stair chemistry. I've got two chiral carbons though in the product. Okay. What's going to be the stair chemistry of this product? What what stair chemistry is possible? Well, we do have a ring. And when you have groups on a ring, they can be they can be cis or trans on the ring. Are the two phenyls cis or trans to each other? Oh, as drums, don't look at it as drums, because as drums, it's not shown. Okay. Are they cis or trans? Cis. It's a single bond, so can it be rotated either way? Which one? The, the two phenyls, we don't know because it's a single bond. No, right? you, you can't rotate anything here. Can't oh, rotate it. Uh, what do you want to rotate? Well, I was thinking you could put, switch the methyl and the pH1, but I guess that would require rotation, which it can't rotate through the ring. Is that the issue? Yeah, you can't rotate. Uh, no. You need to look back at. Uh, <coughs> I agree both of these are trans? Yes. Yes. These are different compounds. Does everybody agree these are different? What's the relationship between these two? They're both trans. Are they the same compound though? What are they? Yeah, these are enantiomers. There's no plane of symmetry. That's the mirror image. Everything's switched. Those are enantiomers. These are different compounds. They're enantiomers. Alright? We didn't call them that. Then, over here, if I agree these are cis, okay? What's the relationship between these two? Does everybody agree those are mirror images? Yes, they are mirror images. What's the relationship between the two? It's the same compound. Because what do you see here? Plane of symmetry. What does that tell you about the mirror image? It's the same. Something with a plane of symmetry and mirror image will be the same compound. Okay? You see why I told you this a month ago? Right. You believe me now? What do you call such a compound that has chiral carbons? It's got two chiral carbons, yet it's not chiral. 
the mirror image is the same thing. What do you call that? Mm -hmm. so, it's been in your notes for a month. You knew that? It's been there. Yeah? Okay. But this is what we're talking about. And we can't rotate. We just got three groups here. I mean, I can put another group here. I can put something forward here, maybe a chlorine. And there's the, all that's fixed. Uh, okay, are the fennel sister trans here? Well, how did I suggest doing this? You can, you can do this however you like. You can memorize, you can do anything. I'm showing your process I suggest. The process is I return this, and let's put, right now the fennels are cis. Uh, I can draw these any way you want, so they can cis. I can make them both forward, yeah? What's that, fennel two? Fennel one? Is that the same compound, just turned? Yes. Okay, when we put the oxygen, the double bond is gone, right? How do we connect the oxygen? Here's the, here's the alkene. Here's the reagent. It attacks the oxygen, and then what does the oxygen do? Back bonds. Back bonds. When it back bonds, it's going to be on the same side. Okay? It's like here. If this hand is going to bond, they both have to be up. There's your product. But guess what? You're also going to get something else. Because he also bonds from the bottom. We do the same exact starting material, but we just do it from the bottom. Alkene attacks oxygen. Up. What does oxygen do? It back bonds. Then we lose H. These are your two products. What's the relationship between those two? You have to look at them. Those are enantiomers. Because remember, it, any reaction we are doing right now is going to be both an enantiomer. Those are enantiomers. Uh, but go back. I'm sorry. Let's put the fennels here. That's fennel one and fennel two. Is that right? There we go. The original question is, are the fennel cis or trans? <coughs> cis. We can also say they have to be. They're cis here. When this reacts to give this, what's the first intermediate in the mechanism? first intermediate is this with an H on it. Basically, the alkene is here. It attacks oxygen and, and immediately it back bonds. Here we go. Alkene and back bond, everything's there. The fennels, in the end, the fennels don't have a chance to rotate. They start cis, they're going to be cis. The first intermediate is basically already the ring. Okay. Um, now, some books and some instructors will show your product like this. They'll say, okay, let's put the oxygen back, and then let's put the phenyl like this. And then we can also show the oxygen four. The problem is they're not telling you how to deal with this. Look over here. That's a tetrahedral carbon. I've got one forward, but I have three in the place. You got problems here. What I'm telling you is if you turn it first, you turn it first, all we did is turn it. It makes your life so much easier. Then just put the correct bonds, the new bonds there in the plane. And if you turn it first, you know you don't have to change anything else. And look over here now. Two in the plane, one forward, one back. I think it's a better way to do it. And that's why I'm suggesting doing it that way. 
Okay, there's some others for you to maybe practice. In the end, this is pulling everything together. We're going back to pulling in our alkene reactions and working in stereochemistry. Um, okay. Uh, some miscellaneous things here. Basically questions throughout. Any questions about this handout? I did this one. Is this RS? Did I get that one? S. I've got an S. Anybody get an R? What's the cow card right here? drug, this, we switched the projection, kept the back from the same, is actually inactive. It's not inactive. Maybe, maybe for the drug to be active, it has to fit into some receptor. <coughs> Bam, drug action. Good thing. Here's the other natural. Bam, there you go. Good drug. Yeah? Making sense? Uh, anything else here? How about this one? Anybody heard, ever heard of levofloxacin? Yeah, uh, antibiotic? Well, quinolone, very common class of antibiotics. Similar to Cipro, which was a number of problems early on. Uh, this drug is actually given as a hemihydrate. What is that? What is hemi? Half. Every mole of the drug has a half a mole of water associated with it. So, and that's for various reasons. Lots of inorganics have water associated with them because it's just hard to remove the water. You can dehydrate them. Um, but water's pretty safe, non-toxic. If the drug wants to exist like this, uh, <coughs> Hydrates can be very amazing. I mean, you ever sodium uh, sodium sulfide? Okay. Anytime you buy it, you're going to be buying nine waters with it. Nine waters. 
somehow Mother Nature and sodium sulfide it just likes to have nine waters come along with it. Why not eight? Why not seven? Different compounds just like different. This is just fascination with nature. Okay? Um, but hopefully you've seen hydrates. A lot of drugs are exist as hydrates. Uh, not many, but um, some do. Question, is it R or S? Well, where's the chiral carbon? Very often, chiral carbons are, can be readily identified because that's where we show projections. I mean, <coughs> there's an H here that's back and forward. But guess what? We usually don't draw H's. Even if we did, does it matter which H you put back? No, an H is an H. But here it matters. That's the uniqueness of a chiral carbon. Okay, what do we got here? What's high priority group on this carbon? Nitrogen. Nitrogen one. What's next? Carbon or carbon? What's on this carbon? H, H, H. What's on this carbon? O, H, H. Right here you get a winner. Oxygen, okay, you, that's pretty intuitive, right? That's one, that's two, this is three. What is it? That's Low priority group in the back, it is S. Okay? Is it D or L? No, no. D or L? Who says D? No data. Who says L? Who says you don't know? Good answer, you don't know. Because that comes from experiment, and R and S has nothing to do with D and L. Okay? Or do you know? Anybody know? The name of this drug is levofloxacin. <laughs> Why do you think they call it levofloxacin? Because it's actually a levorotatory. A lot of times the drug name will give you some information. Actually, floxacin, I think, was the racemic mixture. And when they made this one, which is only S, they're like, how can we change the name of Floxacin to something else? Somebody said, well, since it's levorotatory, let's call it levofloxacin. <laughs> Good, let's do that. <laughs> okay, sometimes names can give you information. Why do you think there's a flow in there? Because it's got fluorine in it. Why do you think there's an ox in there? <laughs> you know, things like this. Okay. Uh, we didn't get to alkynes. Okay, I'm basically, uh, you know, we could talk more and more. We need to pull it to a, close it up there. On Wednesday, we'll start alkynes. We've got that handout I sent by email. Okay? And we'll have all kinds of uh, discussion there. And, uh, uh, everybody good? Okay, guys, uh, see you on Wednesday. A uh, quiz on stereochemistry. Uh, there, yeah.